It is my great pleasure to welcome you to our second Head and Neck Cancer Symposium entitled From Pathways to Therapies. And um, I just wanted to um, thank you all for coming and for attending this very timely meeting. We held one last year and it turned out to be very successful. We felt that the progress both in science, in research and in technologies warrants another symposium. We are probably going to wait another two years for another one, but uh, we hope this is going to be a terrific scientific meeting. So the purpose of the symposium is to bring together experts in new and emerging areas of head and neck cancer research, therapy, and treatment. The need for such a meeting is clear. The American Cancer Society still gives us the statistics that are quite daunting. It's estimated that almost 60,000 people, there will be 60,000 new cases diagnosed in head and neck cancer in the United States alone this year, in 2015, and that about 12,000 Americans will die of this disease. Worldwide, there will be 500,000 cases of diagnosed and 300,000 deaths. And it is estimated that in the United States alone, about $3.6 billion is spent on head and neck cancer treatment. So, um, Despite great progress in molecular genomics and understanding mutational landscapes and in understanding some of the molecular events that underlie this disease initiation and progression, the results in terms of treatment and survival are still relatively depressing. Um, so much of this uh, relies really on cancer complexity. It's due to this cancer complexity that we're just beginning to understand. And uh, it's our job really and our uh, intent to be able to have conversations and to bring together the most recent findings in research and merge them together what's happening in new technologies and treatment. So today's symposium brings together basic scientists and clinicians to discuss the latest development in head and neck cancer research and therapy, and the intention of the meeting is really to bridge this, trans to bridge this translational gap. And um, we have divided the program into four sessions, and they really represent the areas of emerging and uh, significant uh, progress in uh, head and neck cancer, both the therapy and research. And um, we are in a pretty tight schedule. We are starting a bit late today because there is great traffic and I think people are having trouble getting here. But at the same time, we have a lot, a certain amount of time for questions. Outside these questions, we ask that you wait and you can have conversations during our coffee breaks and at lunchtime. Uh, we have two microphones that are set up, they are standing mics, there will be one uh, roaming microphone. If you are asking a question you cannot get to the standing mic, please raise your uh, hand and we'll come to you. I have just a few thank yous before we start. First, I thank everybody who worked on organizing the symposium, our organizing committee, and a dedicated team, our staff that worked behind the scenes. And in particular, I would like to thank Barbara Pike, who is our Associate Director of Research and who spends countless hours dealing with various aspects of organizing the symposium. I also want to thank Dean Hutter, Jeffrey Hutter, who is our steadfast supporter and who has been really behind us in terms of supporting head and neck cancer research at the School of Dental Medicine and all of our um, initiatives that we have started. I also want to say that we received financial support for this meeting. Some of it comes from the National Institute for Dental and Craniofacial Research. We have support from organizations and industries, and they are listed at the acknowledgement, on the acknowledgement slide. We also have some vendors outside, and I encourage you to visit the exhibits and to give them some attention. So welcome to what I see to be a tremendous scientific meeting and uh, discussions on the applications of science to new technologies. And now I would like to introduce Dean Hatter to make his introductory remarks. Well, thank you, Maria. Good morning. On behalf of the Boston University Henry M. Goldman School of Dental Medicine, I am delighted to welcome you to the second annual Head and, Can Head and Neck Cancer Symposium, appropriately entitled this year from Pathways to Therapies. Knowing that many of you have traveled some distance to be with us today, I truly appreciate your participation in what I know will be another exciting and informative educational event. Having worked with Dr. Kukorizinska as the symposium developed over the past several months, I am confident that this year's symposium will prove to be another excellent meeting for researchers and clinicians working in the field of head and neck cancer. Today's symposium builds on the great success of the inaugural head and neck cancer symposium 
entitled Translating Research to Therapy and Cure, held on April the 28th, 2014. The program includes a keynote address by Dr. Lewis Cantley, a world-renowned cancer researcher. We will also hear presentations by prominent researchers and clinicians that will provide information on cutting-edge research on the etiology, pathogenesis, metastasis, and treatment of head and neck cancer. The moderated panel discussions and poster presentations will provide the opportunity for you to engage with the presenters and the material in discussing how research innovations can best be translated to clinical applications. I encourage all of you to participate fully and to contribute towards making this symposium even more of a success than last year's. And the second of what I know will be many future symposia on head and neck cancer held, by, uh, held at Boston University. It is now my distinct pleasure and honor to invite Dr. Gloria Waters, Vice President and Associate Provost for Research at Boston University to make some opening remarks on behalf of the university. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Jeff. I'm really delighted uh, to be here uh, and to uh, give these opening remarks at uh, this symposium. Uh, I gave the opening remarks at the last symposium, and I have to say this is such an important topic and actually important to me personally. My dad passed away from uh, head cancer shortly after the last symposium, and it really uh, struck me how important the work that all of you do here is and uh, what a devastating disease this is. Uh, so I'm really delighted that you've brought together this group of experts. I'm delighted that uh, Maria has really shown uh, the leadership of uh, forging this collaboration with uh, Dana Farber. Uh, and it's very nice, as the VP for Research, one of the things I really like to see is faculty across our campuses uh, working together on these sorts of topics. And so it's nice to see faculty from the basic science departments here on the Charles River campus actually participating in this symposium and uh, bringing people together. So uh, I have to say I want to thank you all for working on this topic uh, and also to wish you uh, great success uh, in your symposium today. Thank you.